Yeah, but, but let me just, I want to point something out and maybe sure. you disagree. Calgary, if you want Calgary to, to win, you put them behind about three goals. Well, Cal Calgary, I cannot remember a team they, 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 at, the, at this point behind. of the year. Calgary has won 10 games when they've been trailing going into the third period. That is incredible. Usually in a year, you win three or four games over the course of an entire year that you're trailing after two. They've won 10, and they've got like 30 games left. That What, what they've done this year with, with the talent they have, uh, you got to give Bob Hartley a ton of credit. And you got to give, you know, Brian Burke a lot of credit. That team has, has uh, found I'm a way they've built something. Sorry, I'm quick. Got, me, got, I, got, yeah, I really like me. How much credit do you want to give Burke? <laughs> I, I give him a little bit of credit. Building the leaps? What's that? How much credit do you give Brian Burke? The same amount of credit you'd give him for building the leaps? <laughs> well, oh. uh, what's your opinion of what Brian Burke's done in Calgary, Bill? Well, my opinion of what Brian Burke, Burke has done in Calgary is one of ambivalence. Okay. Uh, but I do think that Bob Hartley uh, yeah. should be the, the one of the candidates for the Jack Adams uh, trophy. Absolutely. I've seen that well. Hardly. And I, I don't have anything uh, to say about Brian Burke other than he had a chance of a lifetime in Toronto to build a franchise and he did. failed miserably. So I don't know how he's changed going to Calgary. And I, I, I'm, I'm like the rest of us. I'm astonished at how well Calgary has played. And let's give Tree Living, the general manager, some credit. Let's yeah. give Brian Burke some credit for hiring Tree Living. So that's the credit I give Burke. Well, listen, hey, I mean, you watch the players. I, I mean, Johnny Good oh, oh, was stunned. Right. They, they drafted him, what, the third round? I mean, any time you that draft... That was, was uh, what's his nuts, the former general manager. Yeah, that, uh, uh, oh, the guy from Tampa Bay, Feaster. Jay Feaster? Feaster, yeah. yeah. Any time you draft a player in the third or fourth round, and he is an impact top six forward, you've done something incredibly well. Detroit yep. knows all about that with that Zuck and Zetterberg. I, 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 when, I see, when I see teams do that, the scouting and the GM uh, deserve so much credit. Okay, so uh, I'm telling you that you need to give Calgary 100% of that credit for the success of that team and the turnaround of that team to Hartnell. Uh, uh, to Har um, Hartley. Hartley. you got to give it to Hartley and 100%. You, you know, you can't give it to Mr. Burke and not to diss him or disrespect him. He had the opportunity of a lifetime uh, to sound uh, uh, like a, a parrot that uh, what Billy just said. He became a carte blanche here, and he basically, before he left, left his mark. Hi, you know, just terrible, just terrible. I'm telling you that this Mr. Hartley is doing an incredible job to turn that team around, and good for Calgary because it's a great city. I love Calgary. I love the fans there. I hate the cold. And uh, I think he's done a great job. And, I'm, you know, just like Dale Talon. To me, Dale Talon is the reason the Chicago Blackhawks won Stanley Cups. And it's the reason that the Chicago Blackhawks got rid of the curse and the monkey off their back. I'm going to give it all to Dale Talon. And now look what Dale Talon's doing for, uh, for the Panthers. Yep, a very good young team. Bill, could, I want to ask you, Bill, can, can a coach change? Because Bob Hartley had a terrible reputation in Colorado and in Atlanta of being a guy that players hated to play for. He was hurt on them. He, I heard stories of guys that really sounded off on how tough he was on them. You don't hear any of that in Calgary. It seems like the players love him. He, you know, last year, you know, we saw when, we, when him and Tortorella had that exchange, he had his players' backs. Can, can a coach change because he feels like his old style just isn't working anymore? Is that what happened with Bob Hartley? No, I think with Bob Hartley, he had a different team, Eric. It was tough love. Okay. I said, if I'm going to get the best out of this team, i got a coach like Mike Keenan or Scotty Bowman. And that's the change. Now he goes to Calgary, and he barely got six warm bodies there. Right. And all of a sudden, he realizes that whipping them is not going to work. And I think okay. you have to give Hartley credit for that. And I, I think that's what he's done more than anything. He's understood what the capacity or capability of the Calgary Flames are, and he's coached to that, and he's done a hell of a job. I yeah, wanna, he has. I, I and, and like I said, he did not have a good reputation. I heard, I heard terrible like, things about him. You know, and, and, and now I see, I see with him in Calgary goes back to Rochester and yeah. Cornwall. 
Listen, that's where that goes back. And you mentioned okay. Hartley. Hartley was a jerk. Bob yep. Hartley from Hershey was a pain in the ass. Yep, I've heard all the same guys, stuff. Guys, guys, guys. Hartley is a seasoned coach. Whatever, whatever people, whatever players, you know, players are, are the way it is. Some people bring out the best in you. Some people bring out the worst in you. The guy's a seasoned coach, and uh, he's done a great job. I think he's articulate. He's smart. He knows the game. And you're not going to be able to be everybody's friend. You know, I, I was lucky enough to meet Pat Burns. And, and uh, I think he was one of the best coaches. Very tough guy. Uh, you know, very, you know, boom, boom, ex-cop from Quebec. Very tough guy. And he didn't take no shit. And, and you know who can answer that better than I can is uh, Bill. Bill, you were very good friends with Pat Burns. Well, Pat, we worked together for a long time. And I, Pat had a way of uh, understanding what each player's role was, and he could play to that. And he made sure that his best player was his best friend. And Dougie Gilmore was, and that was the story of our success. Well, yeah, I mean, to your point, all you have to do is remember what happened when McSorley hit uh, Doug Gilmore and what Pat Burns' reaction was immediately going after Barry Melrose before Clark dropped the gloves, right? I mean, that shows you right there how Pat Burns felt about Doug Gilmore. And, and I, and I would have I bet... If they would have held that Pat Burns, he would have jumped over and beat the shit out of Barry Melrose, and I would have been with you. And Pat Burns. Yep. But I agree with you on that one, Frank. That would have been a mess, because Barry Flight might have gotten into that, too. <laughs> right, guys, I want to back up here in something. You guys have all taken great shots at, you know, at uh, the former general manager of the Toronto Maple Leafs because of what he did here. Undeniably, he set this franchise back probably how many years you can go on and on and on. I don't know why what he's doing in Calgary is being compared to what he did, what he did, what he did in Toronto. To me, the, the two are not even, a, they're not even comparable. You well, can't I, slag I the guy, some, you can't yeah, slag the guy because he yeah. did a shit job in, in Toronto. He's doing a good job in Calgary. He came in there saying he basically just wanted to be a president, didn't want to do all this stuff. Very quickly, he turned around, got rid of the, the uh, Jay Feaster because he wanted to be in charge. He left the coach there. The team's doing well. He wasn't too keen about some of the personnel that were there at the time. He let it be known. Why, why, why can't you say what he's doing in Calgary is a good job just because he did a crap job well, in Toronto? I'm not saying he's doing a bad job. I'm not saying he's doing a, a great job. I'm telling you that uh, Mr. Hartley deserves the credit for the turnaround. That's my personal opinion. 